Welcome! I'm Jim Plamondon, technology evangelist for Midnight Coders and its integration server, WebOrb. In this screencast, we'll use WebOrb's management console to generate a Flex project file and encapsulate a remote service in a client-side class. This screencast's sample, Hello3, will reuse exactly the same .NET remote service, Get Hello World string, deployed in the Hello0 sample, and encapsulate that remote service in the client-side classes identical to those presented in the Hello2 sample. Let's look at the web page that describes the Hello3 sample. It lists two prerequisite samples. Your first web orb enabled .NET remoting service and Flex client, also known as Hello0, and simple code generation for Flex remoting with web orb, also known as Hello2. Be sure to run these samples, study their source code, and watch their screencasts before watching this one. Take your time. I'll wait. The running Hello3 client application works just the same as the prerequisite samples clients. Press the Invoke button, and after a slight pause, the string Hello World appears. This string was returned by a remote procedure call to a server-side object method. Now, we're going to generate most of this Hello3 client application using WebOrb's code generation. We'll start by launching the management console of my development-focused deployment of WebOrb which is in an IIS virtual directory called WebOrb4, as shown in its URL. Remember, you can have multiple deployments of WebOrb, each with a different security setting, configuration file, and the like. Click on the Services tab, and in the Deploy.NET Assemblies tree component, expand the .NET Assemblies tab. This shows all the .NET assemblies that are deployed into my WebOrb4 deployment of WebOrb. Here is the Hello0 server DLL that we deployed in the prerequisite Hello0 sample, which you have, of course, studied already. Clicking the Hello server DLL opens the Hello server name or Hello0 server namespace. Clicking that shows all the classes in that namespace, of which there is only one, Hello World Service. Clicking on Hello World Service shows all of its public methods, of which there is only one, get Hello World String. With Hello World Service selected, notice that the Code Generator tab over here is enabled. Indeed, its central panel, labeled Client Code Preview, is already filled with generated code. To the right, a stack of radio buttons allows us to generate code for any of a number of different clients, including ActionScript frameworks such as CairnGorm, PureMVC, Mate, and Swizz, or Ajax clients, or even Silverlight. There are other code generation targets supported as well, and you can even add your own code generator. We will explore all these other options in later screencasts, but for this Hello3 sample, will generate code for Flex Remoting. Scrolling down below the stack of buttons, we find a user interface region called Generated Code Structure, which presents a tree view of the files that will be generated. It lists two files, Hello World Service and Hello World Service Model. The same two files WebOrb generated in the Hello2 prerequisite sample. Notice, however, the checkbox labeled Generate Project File. Let's click that, and then click Download Code. This produces a project zip file, which we will save to an appropriate spot. That brings up the Download Complete dialog, and we'll just close it. Next, we'll open Flash Builder and import the project we just generated. Going to the File menu and selecting Import, brings up the Import dialog. We'll select the Flash Builder project type to import, click Next, and that brings up the Import Flash Builder project screen. File is selected. We'll click to browse to the file that we just downloaded and say to open that. I don't like the import destination, so I'm going to change it. 
to this. And with that, I'll click Finish. The result is a new Flash Builder project called Hello 3 Client. Before we look at the generated code, let's look at the project's properties. Right-click on the generated project and select Properties. From there, we'll check the Flex compiler and we'll see that WebOrb has generated an additional compiler argument to point at the services-config.xml file. Now if we go to the Flex Server tab, we'll see that WebOrb's code generation made a mistake. This is in WebOrb 4.1 for .NET, and it set the server technology type as J2EE. You may be tempted to change this to ASP.NET, but do not do so, because if you do, it will erase this string, and that would be bad. So just use the uh, Flex server, just leave it as J2EE. You'll notice that WebOrb's code generation correctly filled out the um, uh, server directory and the virtual directory for the root folders. So we'll accept all of these defaults and just cancel because we haven't actually changed anything. Now we'll go ahead and look at the code. We see that in the source file, it's generated a main application. And main.mxml is quite bare bones. There's essentially nothing going on here. And it's also generated the same two files that were generated by the previous hello2 sample application. So we're not going to look at those at all. The main.mxml is so bare bones that what I'm going to do is cheat. I'm a lousy typist. I'm just going to go ahead into the source of the hello2 sample, the previous sample, open it up, select all, copy it out, go back to main, paste it in. Now you may wonder if I'm going to replace all of the source code, why bother generating the project? And the answer is it produced all of the settings and path names and so forth that make my life a whole lot easier. So let's go ahead and build Hello3 as a web application. And we can see that it looks exactly like the client in all the previous examples. We press the Invoke button, and after a moment, the Hello World string is returned by the server-side class by way of the Hello World service encapsulation on the client side. And that's all there is to it. The key point is that even with trivial samples, WebOrb's code generation gives me a working application at the click of a button, and I'm too lazy a programmer not to like that. With that, this sample is complete. In this screencast, we used WebOrb's management console to generate a Flex project file and encapsulate a remote service in a client-side class. Happy coding!